Hi guys, welcome to Rain's Place. Today I am going to be making a chicken pot pie with a little bit of a spit on it. And I'm going to be doing it in my Wolfgang Puck new 9 inch pie maker. And um, you don't need this obviously to do this. You could do this at a regular pie plate and I'll give you um, directions on how long to cook that for. But I'm going to give this a whirl just because I love my kitchen gadgets and um, why not, right? So what I'm starting with today is I'm going to be doing um, a roux to make as the base of my chicken pot pie. But I'm doing it like I do my um, green bean casserole for Thanksgiving. So it's a little bit of a spin on, you know, traditional, but I think it's really good and I think you guys will like it. So let me tell you what I've got going on here. I chopped up a medium onion, small. I chopped up about six or eight, I think it was about, yeah, about six or eight medium to large size uh, mushrooms. I cooked the, last night, I cooked two chicken breasts on the bone, and then I just uh, baked them in the oven, and then I pulled them off the bone. So I have that there. And I'm going to be using a jar of my canned um, carrots and potatoes. There's a little starch in there, so I have to rinse them out. Um, if you don't have that, like most people don't, all you have to do is take a little saucepan and in it cut up and boil, I would say, um, either one large potato or two medium potatoes and a handful of carrots, maybe um, half a cup of carrots, and then just boil them until they're fork tender, drain them, and we'll be at the same stage. What I'm going to do now is I'm going to uh, turn you around real quick to my frying pan. And what we'll do is we'll get the um, we'll get the butter going and get the onions and mushrooms sautéed. Um, I'm trying to go. Oh, and this is just a store-bought pie crust that I'm using. You could obviously use homemade, but these are so easy. And around Thanksgiving and Christmas, they have them on sale, really cheap. So I buy a bunch of them, throw them in the freezer. So you're going to need one package that has two crusts to make this up. So I'm just I'm not going to pause you. I'm just going to turn you around. I hope I don't get you sick. Uh, you'll probably see my, my newest member of the family. That's Miss Penelope. I don't normally have dogs in the kitchen, but Penelope is new to our home, so she requires a little more attention. So she's in here with me. Okay. So we'll get this on. I feel like I'm missing something. What I'm going to do is I'm going to throw a couple of tablespoons of butter in here. They're a little light to be tablespoons, but... I have about two and a half tablespoons of butter there, and I have the oven on, I mean the uh, top burner. I'm just going to open up my potatoes and drain them real quick while we're waiting for that butter to melt. I'm just, you can't see me, I'm off camera, but some of these potatoes are in rather large chunks, and so I am just cutting them in half with my paring knife. And that's probably good. Okay. Those will drain. In this pan... Got the butter. I'm going to put a drop of vegetable oil just so that I um, don't burn my butter. So do you guys have a favorite recipe for pot pie? Um, I think beef is my favorite, but um, I like the chicken one too. And I've never done this for pot pie with the, uh, the base, like the green bean casserole, and I was actually going to do green beans in it, but I thought it would, you know, take it over the top green bean casserole, but I bet it would be good anyway. But, um, I think I'm going to get these onions going in here. And if you don't like mushrooms, don't add them. Um, anything in here that you don't like, just 
leave it out or substitute it. Popeyes can really, you know, you can put anything in them. Anything to your liking will do. I'm going to give these just a couple minutes before I put the mushrooms in. All right, if you want, I can stop here for a minute and um, let the vegetables start browning, uh, not browning, sautéing, and then I will bring you back when we're ready to throw the mushrooms in. Okay, guys, we're back. It was only just a few minutes, but the onions are sautéing nicely, and I'm going to add these mushrooms to it real quick. Now, there's not many, and they're pretty small, and the pan's nice and hot, so it shouldn't take very long. In the meanwhile, over to my right here, I have some butter in case I need to add more. I have my salt and pepper. I have some dry ranch seasoning, which again is like a secret ingredient in my mother's green bean casserole. And then I just got some flour out of the, uh, the giant canister just so it would be easier. I brought a spoon for that and a little whisk so when I start making the roux it will all come together nicely. I've got to grab the milk. And now I believe we're all set. I just got to get these mushrooms. Ooh, I love them like this when they start getting that little bit of brown on the onions. My favorite. Boy, that pan's really jiggling around, isn't it? Let me hold it still. So I got this stuff on QVC. It's called BioCleaner. And um, I'm always looking for something good to clean my kitchen. As you can see, I just I just threw some stuff out of the pot. Okay, so I have a glass cooktop, and it's a pain in the neck to clean. Um, what I got was this stuff called BioCleaner, and it had mixed results online. But I'm like, you know what? Let me give it a try. And I did my my top, and oh my god, very minimal um, elbow grease behind it, and it it cleaned up beautifully. The only thing I had a problem with is this burner because I used my canner on it, so I've actually scratched the surface. But um, other than that, anything that was actually on it came right off. So if you guys, anybody have a, a horribly, um, I hate the black ones. The black ones, I'm putting about three tablespoons in here of flour. If anybody needs something like that, you might want to give it a try. Um, again, I don't know how it'll work for you, but on my, uh, on my stove top, it came out nicely. I haven't tried it on anything else yet, but they give you like three tubs of the uh, of the product. I'm gonna try it on my bathtub soon and see if that will, uh, you know, be easier cleaning. Okay, so you just um, you want to cook the flour out a little bit, just so it's not raw tasting. I've got the pie maker warming up. I just plugged it in. I have it open and I have a piece of foil on the bottom, which I seen was a tip from Wolfgang Puck. Um, one of my viewers, Dragonfly Arts um, Arts One, if I if I butcher that, I'm sorry, Dragonfly, but um, she told me a good tip. She said it's healthier if you use the parchment paper on the bottom. But right now I'm um, I'm out of parchment, so I'm going to definitely buy some and give that a try. So. Thanks for that tip, Dragonfly Arts One. I definitely will try it. Okay, so I'm ready to put some milk in. Just do a little bit of time, and I'm going to switch over to my whisk. Okay, so I don't know if you guys know or not, but a roux is a basic, um, you know, a basic base to anything that you want. You could use a roux to make macaroni and cheese. You can use a roux to make um, a gravy, tomato gravy, chicken gravy, 
and uh, you just want to make sure that you stir it because that butter and the flour you stuck in there is your thickener so it's going to make anything you stick in here nice and thick okay and I have my oven on my burner on a medium high and I'm going to lower it to a to a medium and now you want this creamy and thick but you don't want it too thick and you don't want it too loose because it's definitely you know going to be holding your pie ingredients together but we can also add milk if we feel like we put our stuff in and it's too and it's too thick or too loose okay so let's see what we're going in here this is coming out nice and thick and what I want to do now I'm going to add a little bit more milk Okay, into this now, I'm going to add some salt, some pepper, I'm going to add a couple tablespoons of my powdered ranch dressing. If you don't have the kind in the container, I would just use a packet. And this adds such a flavor, and like I said, I think that's what, to me, makes this taste like my green bean casserole. This is the base of my green bean casserole. Um, I would have used like double the amount of mushrooms if it was the actual casserole. And then I would pour this over some um, French style fancy petite green beans. And then put it in a casserole dish and top it with those French fried onions. And that is my basic, um, that's actually my mother's green bean casserole. Okay, now to this lovely roux, I'm going to add, I'm turning this off because I feel like it's plenty done. I'm going to add a little more milk, only because I don't want it to be too thick. And if it looks too thin, I'll just turn the heat back on and thicken it up a little more, but I feel like we're really good here. This is probably going to be way more filling than I need for a pie, so I can either make two pies or I can do um, one pie and put the rest of the filling in the freezer for another day, which is probably what I'm going to do. Mmm, delicious. Okay. So to this now, I have my drained vegetables. And again, if you don't have them, and probably most people don't keep a jar of... Uh, of canned potatoes and carrots but um, just boil them in a small pot any vegetables you like green beans would be good in here um, look at I got a thing in there peas if you like that kind of thing we don't do peas really I'm gonna grab some chicken and that is two chicken breasts worth of uh, chicken Well, that's a lot, huh? And this is mainly, you know, stuff from my pantry. You could do a rotisserie chicken if you didn't want to do, um, you know, bake your chicken ahead of time. Mmm, that tastes good. I think I need a little cracked black pepper on mine. Okay, so in my regular chicken pot pie, I normally would put like thyme in there because I feel like that's that nice poultry, um, I don't know, it gives me that like poultry Thanksgiving feeling. But because I use the, um, the ranch in it, I feel like I don't need that. Okay. I think that we are ready to make a pie. I'm just going to put that on the back burner, and now I'm going to roll you back to the other side quick. Whoop. Okay, what else do we need? Hang on one second. 
second. I'm just getting my, uh, Okay. Let's get our pie dough going. I thought I had the roller over here. I see it now. Boy, my knuckles are killing me. I don't know if it's just cold weather, but I wonder if anybody else is having trouble this week. Okay, so I put it out and I'm just going to get my little pastry roller. You can also roll with a regular, a regular rolling pin or a glass, anything. You don't even really have to do this, but I just like to make sure that I have enough pie dough to go over my pan. And I told you earlier, you don't need the pie maker to do that. That's just for fun, but um, you can definitely make, I um, forgot my pie cutter. You can definitely just make this in a regular, you know, pie pan. So the pie maker comes with a pie thing, a pie cutter. This uh, larger ring does the bottom crust, and then the smaller ring does the top crust. So we're doing the top crust, I mean the bottom crust first. And you don't have to use the foil in here. It's just to make it easier to get it out which I am all about. And I would imagine it's going to make cleanup a little bit easier, too. Okay, bottom crust in. And then this pie um, crust is going to be way big enough to do the smaller top crust, so I'm not even going to bother rolling it. I'm just going to cut it. What happened there? I don't know. Not enough pressure on the top. Okay. Oh, I really don't know what is wrong with me today. There we go. We have a top crust. I'm, oh, it's starting to bubble in there. Let me get the... Uh, the filling in. Get my little ladle. I have my assistant Penelope over here trying to help me here. This will definitely make two pies. But like I said, I'm going to make one, and any leftover filling will be another day's pie. And now this does not have a hugely um, high well on the top, so I'm, I'm debating about how much filling to actually stick in here. I want the top to be nice, but I don't want to make a big mess either. I'm feeling good about that. Okay. Let me just grab a little photo so I can uh, share. I have to get a new phone, but um, I really hate phones. So I'm not looking forward to learning how to use one all over again. We put the top on. They say not to worry about if it's messy or not because it's going to crimp it and close it when you close the top down. I'm going to buckle the top down, and I'm going to set my timer. Let me do a quick, real quick. Alexa, set a timer for 15 minutes. Okay. Um, my husband got that for Christmas, and um, the button on my stove to set the timer is really hard, and when my knuckles are bothering me, it's almost impossible to do. So, thankfully, it's easy enough for me to use. Okay, so I have the timer set for 15 minutes. It says 15 to 18 minutes on the instructions. Um, I'll bring you back in 15 minutes, and we'll check on its progress together. And if we need to, we'll set the timer again for three more minutes until we have a finished pie. All right, guys, thanks for helping me with this. I am going to clean up the kitchen a little bit, and I'll be back with you in just 15 minutes. 
Okay, guys, um, my timer just went off for 15 minutes, and um, I wish you had smell vision because it smells so good in here. I'm going to open it up, see if we need to add a couple more minutes or not. Ooh, I don't think we need to add any more time. It is nicely browned. Feels crunchy. Um, a little, a little of the filling came out the side. I may have overfilled it just slightly. That's fine. I'm going to attempt to take it out. I'm going to unplug it. I'm going to take it out and put it on a plate, and then we'll come back in, I don't know, 20 minutes or half an hour after it's cooled down a little bit and set, and then we can cut it open and give it a taste. But let me, um, let me try to get it out without ruining it. Wish me luck. Okay, so the foil in here is supposed to be so you don't burn your fingers and to get it out all in one piece. So let's, oh yeah, that was easy. Okay. All right, so we will um, leave that cool and I will come back, like I said, in about 20 minutes or half an hour and we'll put it on the plate and we'll, we'll cut it into sections and see, uh, see what it looks like and we'll give it a taste okay guys we're back it's about about 30 minutes or so um it's still warm but it should have cooled down enough we're going to try to give it a slice you can see how flaky the pie dough is Better put it on my plate before I before I lose it. There we go, Wolfgang Puck, nine inch pie maker. It's a full size pie. Fifteen minutes, and um, let's give it a try. I want to get some crust because, like I said, that's my favorite. my phone my daughter is sending me baby pictures mmm that roux with the ranch so good okay now not everybody has the pie maker so if you don't do the same thing that we just did but instead of putting it in here put it in a pie dish I would bake it I would say 375 to 400 degrees and I would start with a half an hour and then check it. Um, if you have a clear pie pan, like a glass one, they're a little bit easier to, um, you know, to check its progress on the bottom. And um, I would say you probably need no more than 35 minutes. But um, I hope you guys like the video. I hope you enjoy the gadget of the day, which is the 9-inch Wolfgang Pie Maker. And most of all, I hope you give this chicken pot pie a try because it is delicious. If you haven't done so already, please hit that red subscribe button and give me a thumbs up if you enjoyed this video. Thanks so much for watching. I'll see you.